to differentiate up is in the coaching. The way we coach is quite different from most other training I've ever experienced. And so that, again, is not a very easy thing to describe. You have to really experience it. And that coaching is one of the core things that differentiate us from other companies. Because in the coaching, we're looking for breakthroughs and we're looking for self-discovery. Now, uh, it's a very sad thing to say that training doesn't work. A bit ironic coming from a training company. But it doesn't work because people don't apply what they've learned. They get the training and then they don't use it. So companies are wasting time and money. So we found a couple of things. When the trainer tells you something, you don't own it. So Dale Kani discovered this 100 years ago. So our training is around a lot to do with self-discovery. We found that when you own the information, it's usually something very practical you'll use, and the learning is permanent learning. So you'll keep it forever. So that's a very high value part of our brand to provide you something that's immediately usable and permanent in your memory. And the other thing is comfort zone. Problem with most training is that you go to the training, but you haven't changed. And you go back to your desk and you do what you always did. This is the problem. You do the same things in the same way, you get the same result. The trouble is, none of our bosses, or if we are the bosses, want last year's results. We want more. And we want more, faster, better, and costing less. So how do you do that? That change has risk attached to it. We all want to have the benefits of change. We just don't want to change ourselves. So we work a lot on helping people expand their comfort zone to embrace the risk of change, to adopt change, to get the higher performance. And that's not an easy thing. But if you look at a Dale Carnegie manual, it's lots of air. It's not a lot of heavy text like a textbook. There are no case studies particularly. But it's all experiential. It's self-discovery. It's got breakthroughs built into it, which is the brand. The delivery is the brand. I could pack up all of our manuals right now and ship it to all of our competitors and say, here, here's all our manuals. Go for it. You can't go for it because the experience is the brand. And the way we train our trainers is the brand. And that sustainability of that training mechanism is the brand. So comfort zone expansion is a critical part of what we do. Now, I'm going to go through briefly a couple of the principles that are in your golden books there to give you some flavor. Now this one is principle number 22. When you read it, you think, oh, that's, uh, yeah, OK. Uh, begin with praise and honest appreciation, you know. Like, so what? But think about this. When was the last time either you as the boss or your boss came up to you and started with praise and honest appreciation as opposed to, okay, where's my report? Where's my uh, document I've been waiting for? What's happening with that customer? Where are the numbers? Does this sound familiar to anybody? <laughs> <laughs> We've forgotten about the praise and you know, honest appreciation part, where it might sound something like this. Thank you very much for the work you did with that client in the meeting last week. I think that really made the meeting go well. I'm looking for the latest numbers for where we are in October. Are they ready yet? To hear the difference, a little bit of praise first, and then where's my numbers, as opposed to where's my numbers. It's a very simple thing. But to make that your default, it takes training. It takes skill to do that. You can read the book, but you actually need the training to make it your habit. But again, when you read it, it sounds simplistic. But you think about now, from now on, try that. When you're going to ask someone for something, begin with praise and honest appreciation at the start, and then get to what you want. Here's another one. Ask questions instead of giving direct orders. We own the world we create. The trouble is, most of our worlds are created for us. Do this, do that, and particularly in a country like Japan, where often people are looking for that type of direction. Don't ask me to think, tell me what to do. But most foreign companies are asking for, what should we do? What are your ideas? What could we do? What aren't we doing? The trouble is, if you're just giving orders, that's not going to come out. So now I think you discovered, if you want to have good human relations, Instead of giving direct orders, ask the person, what do you think about this? How do you think this should be done? Have you seen this done anywhere before? 
Is this worked anywhere else you've seen in the company? And suddenly the person is empowered. We talk about empowerment, but we give them no empowerment because we're drilling them full of holes with orders. What he's talking about here is don't give direct orders. So when you're going to ask for something of a subordinate, ask in an indirect way. They'll feel proud to give their idea. They'll feel valued to give their idea. They'll feel engaged to give their idea. And it will change their life, and it will change your life in terms of how you act as a, as a leader. Here's another one. Make the other person happy about doing the thing you suggest. Often, we're not happy. I'm busy. And now you want something else? I'm already up to here with work, and you want this? Why would I be happy about this extra work? So we think about that. We're asking people to take on additional projects or do something fast or do something more. But why would they be happy about doing that? So how we approach the subject, the communication side of things, the skill we have makes all the difference in getting the person to sign on. And again, if you think about it, you want to ask someone in your company, be it a peer or a subordinate, to help you with something. How can you do that in a way that they would want to do it? Because we know if they bring their passion and commitment to the task, they'll do it so much better. And they'll do it so much more independently as well. And this is a great one. You know, we ask for about step out of your comfort zone. But stepping out of your comfort zone has risk because you're doing something you're not necessarily good at and you're probably doing it for the first time. So you're bound to make mistakes. But what happens when they make a mistake? We jump all over them. Oh, you missed this. This was wrong. Oh, that's an error. Wow, that's going to screw up the company's books for the month. Or we're going to lose money on that project. We jump all over them. And then we ask them to step out again. Well, they don't step out again. They're smart. They say, hey, comfort zone's a good place to be. Don't go outside of here. So what Dale came here said was, instead of thinking about jumping on people with you know, criticism and mistake, can you let them see there's been a mistake if they're not aware of it, or just talk about it indirectly so you don't break the relationship with the person. And this is what he was on about. How to win friends. How to make the people who work for you friends in the sense of you're very close in the relationship. The trust is very high. And so think about if you do see a mistake, how can I reference this mistake in a way that won't destroy the relationship or demotivate that person, which is often what happens.